Okay, um, hopefully you can hear me. But this is a video for the off bow diagram section of 5.2. So we're going through the class notes for 5.2, and we're going to start with what was at, what had an asterisk in the notes packet. And if you're looking at what I have on the board so far, I have the off bow principle, I have the poly exclusion principle, and I have Hun's rule. And what I've written in here are the pieces that you should have gotten from the textbook. If you need to copy them, you can. But we're going to go through some class notes pieces to these, and then I'm going to show you how to apply these to electron configurations and what the heck is an electron configuration, okay? So first of all, the off-bow principle says that electrons occupy the orbitals with the lowest energy first, okay? And the reason why is low energy equals stability. So I'm gonna write that in this box. So please add this. Low energy equals stability is what I wrote, if you can't read it. Low energy equals stability. If you think about a toddler, say a three-year-old, you give them a bag of candy on Halloween and they eat all of it, they're, they're not gonna be stable. They're gonna be bouncing off the walls. Now think to yourself, when is that same three-year-old most stable? Well, it's when they're sleeping. When they're at that low energy state, they're in the most stable state. So what's true for that three-year-old is actually also true for electrons. The lowest energy state that they can occupy is their most stable state. So in the asterisk piece of this notes, Okay, we're going to write how we're going to use this rule when we're doing off-bow diagrams, which again, you don't know what that is yet, but we're going to get there. Okay? Electrons will fill energy level one. Electrons will fill energy level one before two, before three, etc. Okay. And S orbitals before P, D, and F. And S orbitals before P, D, F. And it's in that order. S orbitals are always filled first in their energy level, and then we put electrons into P orbitals, and then we put them into D orbitals when we're trying to figure out where all the electrons are in an atom. Okay, below that, Pauli exclusion principle. An atomic orbital may describe at most two electrons. So the expand box, okay, it expanded on that idea in the book. I wrote each orbital can have one or two electrons. If it has two, they must have opposite spins. And to show spin, we use arrows, okay? So if there's two electrons in an orbital, we're going to use an up arrow for one of the electrons, and we're going to use a down arrow for the other electron to just show that they're spinning in opposite directions. Now, spin is not the same as orbit. Keep those separate, okay? I can spin like this, and I'm not orbiting around anything when I do that, okay? So we're talking about a quantity in a really advanced mathematical equations that we labeled spin, and the spin can be positive or negative. We can be up, down, it can be clockwise, counterclockwise, but we're talking about an aspect of the electron as it's moving randomly through the orbital. We don't need to understand the word spin, we just need to know that they're opposites of each other if they're in the same orbital, okay? If you really wanna understand the quantum mechanics, then you need to take some advanced chemistry and advanced physics, particle physics classes when you go to college, okay. So that's the Pauli exclusion principle. At the top of the next page in your notes packet, we have Hund's rule. Now Hund's rule says electrons occupy to make the number, sorry, occupy orbitals to make the number with the same spin as large as possible. If your head is exploding right now because you're confused, that's okay. This rule, it doesn't make a lot of sense when you have no idea what it's talking about. So we're gonna expand and then we're gonna show you an example to help you understand Hun's rule, okay? So I'm gonna just expand, I'm gonna put a, a reword of rewording of his rule right here and then we're gonna use it, okay? So 
electron fill orbitals electrons fill orbitals in the same energy level in the same energy level one at a time before pairing one at a time before pairing now, this still might not make any sense to you, but we're going to get there. We're going to do an example, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to point out to you when we're using Hund's rule, okay? Um, electrons fill orbitals in the same energy level one at a time before pairing. And really, to be super correct, we would say in the same energy sublevel here. So if you can squeeze a little sub in there, I apologize for not having that there um, the first time I wrote it, okay? Same energy sublevel, okay? Now we're going to use these two funky looking diagrams on your paper, okay, um, to follow these rules and show where every single electron is in an example element. Okay, so we can kind of see the names of the rules over there. Again, I'm not going to ask you to know the names of the rules. I'm going to See how you fill an off-bow diagram out, and I'm going to know that you understand these rules based on how you fill this out, okay? So I'm not even going to ask you to write these rules for me. All I'm going to ask you to do is fill in an off-bow diagram. Now let me explain to you what we're looking at. First of all, the one on your paper is better than this, but this is the whiteboard that I had that I could use to make an off-bow diagram and it's narrow, and so I had to stack it a little bit differently than what you have on your paper, okay? But what this is showing, when we are done filling this in, it is going to show us where every single electron is likely to be found in an element. We're gonna pick an element and we're gonna fill this in. Now, the way that this works is, if this were the actual atom, the nucleus would be way off the board down below, okay? Energy level one is our first layer of electrons is right here. Energy level two is here, 2s, 2p, okay? Because energy level one only has s's. Energy level two has an s and three p's, okay? Energy level three has an s, three p's, five d's, and it's here. And see how my energy levels are getting closer to each other as we get higher up the board? That was, I was, that was my attempt anyway at drawing this. Okay, again, it shows up a little bit better on your diagrams. Now, and we're going to fill in electrons using these rules for an element. Then we're gonna do one together, and then I'm gonna have you do another one, kind of pause the video, do it, and then come back and check to see how you did. So this first element that we're gonna do here is going to be arsenic. I'm gonna change my marker color here so you can maybe see it better. I'm gonna do this for arsenic. Okay, now if we look for arsenic on the periodic table, we find it has symbol AS. And what we really need to know about it is how many electrons it has in order to fill in this diagram. And it has 33 electrons. That atomic number is the number of electrons in arsenic when it's a neutral atom. Now we have to fill all 33 electrons into this diagram using these three rules. Now, first rule is we're gonna fill from the bottom to the top. So we're gonna fill going up like this, okay? Now it also says S's before P's, D's, and F's for the same level. Well, that's gonna be taken care of for us because the 2S is below the 2P on this diagram. So if we go bottom to top, we're gonna to fill this in the right order, okay? All right, the second rule, each orbital can have one or two electrons. And if there are two, we're gonna show them like this, opposite spins, one up, one down. And the third rule, electrons are gonna fill orbitals in the same energy sublevel, one at a time before pairing, okay? Now, if I'm looking at level two, I've got a 2s and I've got 2p. Those are the two sublevels. And then when we get there, I'm gonna show you how to fill those in. Okay, so we're gonna start at the bottom. In the 1s orbital right here, we can fit a maximum of two electrons. So I'm going to put one with an upward arrow and I'm gonna put one with a downward arrow. 
Okay, that's two. We're trying to get to 33. So 31 more to go. The next lowest level is level two, S. I'm going to put two electrons there. So that's electron number three and number four. Again, we're going until we get to 33. Now, when we get to a set of p orbitals, this is where Hund's rule comes in. You need to get into a habit of putting one electron in each orbital and then going back and pairing them up. Okay, so I'm going to put one in each p orbital like this. Okay, so that was electron number five, number six, number seven. And then pointing down, number eight, number nine, number ten. Now, am I going to know if you drew them like that or if you just did up, down, up, down, up, down? No, I'm not going to know that for the 2p. But at the end of the diagram, I am going to know it if we end up in a section that has multiple orbitals. I'm going to know whether you filled it in correctly or not. Okay? So, again, we're at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Keep going. The next lowest level is here. So we get 11, 12. The three p's are going to be 13, 14, 15, one at a time, and then 16, 17, 18. Continuing on, if you look at your diagram, the 4s is a little bit lower than the 3d. There's a little overlap in those energy levels, okay? So I'm going to go 19, 20 in my 4s orbital, and then I'm going to start filling in my d's. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then downs, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And now I only have three left. And at the 4P, I'm going to put one in each. 33 electrons. Now, that is where I will know whether you're following Hun's rule. If you did up, down, up, and left this one completely blank, you're not following Hun's rule. Okay. In reality, one electron would go into each orbital instead of pairing them up because electrons are negative. They repel each other. So if they can have their own space, their own orbital to travel in, they will do so. And that's the purpose of Hund's rule, to show that they will spread out. These are all the same energy level, so there's no reason why we should put two things that repel each other in the same orbital when they can be in three separate orbitals. Okay, so this is the configuration for arsenic in an off-bow diagram. Now, we're not stopping there. You can fill a diagram out, but you have to have a diagram or you have to draw a diagram, and that can be problematic. You might not have that ability, okay? We're going to eventually learn how to write out an electron configuration using the periodic table. We're going to learn that part in class so you can ask lots of questions, okay? But here... We're going to translate this into an electron configuration, which is kind of like a code that represents this atom, okay? And the way that it works is we're going to name each orbital, and then we're going to um, put how many electrons are in that orbital and then keep going, okay? So which orbital did we fill first? Well, we filled the 1s orbital first because that was the lowest on the PR table. So I'm going to write 1s, and our orbitals are always written with lowercase letters. Now, how many electrons did we put into that orbital? Two, an up and a down. That's it. That's the most you can fit into an orbital. Well, we're going to put a little superscript two. So this is not 1s squared. It's 1s2 is how we would read that, 1s2. The next orbital that we put electrons into was 2s. And we put two electrons in that orbital, so 2s2. Now notice, I am not dividing this up with commas or any other kind of punctuation. So if you started to automatically put a comma there because it helps your brain, don't do it. No commas, okay? This is just going to be a series of numbers and letters, and that's it. Okay, the next place we put electrons was 2p. So energy level is this big number. That's our energy level. The s's, the p's, the d's, those are our sublevels which are also called orbitals. And then these superscripts are the electrons that we put there. So if you want to label the first section here to show yourself what you're doing. Now we put six electrons in the 2p, so 2p6. 
and then 3s2. Then we fill the 3p with 6. 4s2. Then we fill the 3d. 3d10. And then we filled the 4p, but we didn't fill it all the way. We only put 3 in it. So this right here is what we call the electron configuration for arsenic. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p3. Okay. One more thing that we need to learn about. So in the space below your off-bow diagrams, but before you see class notes continued, I would like you to write a definition. We're gonna write a definition for a term called valence electron. Valence, V-A-L-E-N-C-E, -E, electrons. Valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the highest energy level of an atom. The electrons in the highest energy level of an atom. These will always be these will always be in S and p orbitals these will always be in s and p orbitals now this is going to be a really important thing coming up when we start talking about reactivity okay how an element reacts behaves that is going to be depend completely on the number of valence electrons and we do abbreviate valence electrons capital v e minus Okay, so valence electrons, B, E minus. Now, as we're looking at arsenic, keeping in mind that these large numbers are energy levels, the letters are our orbitals or sublevels, and the little numbers are electrons. How many valence electrons does arsenic have? Okay, how many valence electrons? Electrons in that highest energy level. Well, you might at first think three, okay? Because when we look at this picture, the highest place that we got to is right here, and there are three electrons there, okay? But energy levels are represented by these large numbers. And I have energy level four in front of that P. These ones are in energy level three, so they're not part of that high energy level. But right here, I also have an energy level four. Okay, 4s and 4p. If you notice, energy level 3 and level 4 overlap a little bit. Okay, so there's a little bit of overlap. The highest part of energy level 3 is here, the lowest part of energy level 4 is here. So there's a little bit of overlap here. Okay, but energy level 4 is the highest energy level for arsenic. And if we look at that energy level, how many total electrons are there in that level? Well, there's two here and there's three here. Whoops. So there's a total of five valence electrons for arsenic. Five valence electrons. Five valence electrons, okay? Now you can also see that in this piece of arsenic, our electron configuration, I have energy level four right here, energy level four right here. There's two electrons plus three electrons, so that's a total of five valence electrons. Super important for us to understand valence electrons coming up. And so we're gonna, we're gonna start it right now and we're gonna hit you with it over and over and over. Okay, what I want you to do, pause the video after a second here, and I want you to fill in this diagram for another element and use it to write out your electron configuration for that element, okay? And that element is going to be, I'm gonna write it in purple so that we can see a difference here. Oops is going to be palladium palladium not platinum palladium pd okay palladium p a l l a d i u m which is p d 
and it has 46 electrons. So start filling in your diagram until you get to 46, pause the video, and then when you're done, hit play and I will go over the answer. Again, you're going to pause the video, do the off bow diagram and an electron configuration for palladium. Okay, so I'm just gonna move the five beam electrons up here next to arsenic. When you fill in this diagram for palladium, it's gonna start out just like arsenic did, so you should get up to here just fine. Then we're at 34, 35, 36. Then we go to 5s, 37, 38. 4d, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43 making sure I'm counting right here. So again, I was at 36, 37, 38, 43, 44, 45, 46. Okay, 44, 45, 46. So when you have completed this for palladium, when you get to the 4D, it should have three orbitals that are full, two arrows, and it should have two orbitals that are half full with only one arrow. Now, if you have both those arrows pointing up, or both of them pointing down, you're good. You don't wanna have one up, one down, because Hun's rule says they need to have the same spin, okay? But one, one direction or the other, pick one, and as long as they're the same, we're good. So that's how you'd fill that in. And then I'll read this to you. You can read it on your sheet if you've already written it. I'm gonna write it and read it at the same time. So here we go, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d8, 4d8. All right, there's my electron configuration for palladium. The last piece that we wanted you to do, again, was valence electrons. So if you haven't done that yet, maybe pause for a second. But the valence electrons, the highest energy level electrons in palladium, are not the ones that we drew last in this case. If we look for the highest energy level out of these numbers here, we are going to find level five was the highest energy level for palladium, which means that it only has two valence electrons, two valence electrons in palladium. Now, one more thing that I forgot as far as what you might see in the book. The book is also going to ask you for how many unpaired electrons there are in an element. And so what you do for that is you just look at your off-bow diagram. So palladium has two unpaired electrons right there. And if we look at the, I don't know if you can see color differentiation on your video, but for arsenic, if you were to look back at your arsenic picture, there were these three electrons in the 4P that were unpaired. So it has three unpaired electrons. So unpaired electrons can also affect properties like magnetism and things like that. Okay. All right, well that is the notes for off-bow diagram and you can now successfully complete the off-bow activity on the next page. If you need to refer back to this video for help, please do so and we will see you in class.